Hi there, Shanna Kramer here. Today I have a nice watercolor fox. I've already got it sketched out on the paper. I've got my paint out. Just deciding which colors I wanna use in the background. I'll do the background first on this one. The grass will be a nice green. Um, I have a little bit of green here. I don't think it's the right one. That's actually pretty good right there. Okay, so there's a, a nice green and then I have the sky, which is going to be a late fall, actually winter, snowy, snowy sky. So it'll be a few different colors, mostly darks. I've got um, this neutral tint. And that'll be good up in these areas. And then I'll want to add a blue to that. Usually this is thalo blue over here. This thalo blue and the neutral tint make a pretty good winter color, winter sky color. That's already just about perfect. And I want a little bit of green in that as well. So maybe I'll, I will take some more of this green over here. And I'll link the colors below. I can't remember them all offhand right now, but I can send a list or I can include a list. I'll need a little more paint than that. Okay. That'll probably be enough to get us started. I'm pretty much out of transparent water. So I'll just work with what I've got. This should be getting nice and dark down in here. I guess I do want some gravity, so I'll just prop up, prop up the whole piece of paper there. Gravity is always helpful with watercolor. Maybe even a little darker yet, down toward the bottom. I'm trying to be a little careful around the edges of the fox here. Okay, onward, I'll quick try to attach the rest of my sky here before it dries too much. Again, being a little careful around the edge of the fox. This is the one case where a flat can be helpful. I do like round pointed brushes. Just because you can do pretty much anything with them. You can make straight lines, sharp lines, fuzzy organic lines. But if you need to block in an area with a straight edge, a flat's the way to go. Get some darkers in there. Take up some more neutral tint, more blue. We're going to make it really dark over on this side. That's the rule, three darks and a light. On the corners anyway. So I'll have my light corner and then my other three corners will be dark. Gotta keep going here before it dries. Down here are going to be my background trees. I'll get some nice mottled color in there. There, pick up some of those greens. I even want to add a little brown in there. Warm it up in a few areas.
there we go. And I kind of, I do want that a little bit, a little bit darker. Maybe a little bit greener. I don't want to go back over this too much. Okay. I'll mix up some more green. We'll try for a brighter green. So I'll take some more of this. I want this. And it's already getting a little bit murky just because of the old leftover paint that's in there. Might want to try adding a brighter yellow. Yep, I kind of have dirty brush everywhere, so I'm not going to get the bright green. But I can try. All right, I'm going with this. And I think I'm actually going to flip it upside down here so gravity is going the other way. Ooh, before I do that. I missed my background before it dries. That's a bright, bright green. Probably want to dull down a few spots there with that blue mixture, blue gray mixture. As long as the grass is wet, we'll put some snow on the grass. I'm misting it with a little bit of water. Okay. Pause now a minute, let this dry. I want to work with this uh, gray colors first, especially since I have this nice dirty water. And that dirty water is pretty good for tinting the lightest areas. Just a tiny little bit of a neutral tint in there. I'm leaving some white areas, especially right under the chin where it really goes bright. So I'm way more water than that. I have to keep this sponge a little closer, it looks like. one area where I can get a little bit darker. There. I don't mind that blend. That's pretty nice right there. Go even more. 
more of that neutral tint. We've got a nice dark, dark color right up in here. And the fox's little nose is going to be pretty dark. Let's see. Right down the center of his nose. Nice little dark part. I'm not using any black on this. It's kind of a, a hazy, foggy winter day, a little bit snowy. And so I'm going to stick with the more um, grays instead of any blacks. Grays make way more sense here anyway. Okay, let's see. One more clean, dirty water. <laughs> We'll get a few more areas in this this fox's um, chest area. And dirty water is about the perfect color right about now. Bringing in some darks again right down here at the bottom. See how that's starting to blend in nicely? Bring that blend up. As long as we keep these furry edges, it's not really a wash. Uh, so then edges look normal. When we come back later and add more edges, then it'll be just fine. Let's see, I want a little bit kind of darker up underneath these, this ear here. So this will be just a shadow. It's going to be orange. I'll come back with the orange, but right now I just want that darker shadow. Same within the ear. I'll put the shadow in the ear. And this one will kind of blend out. Bring up my darker edge. One more dark, small area right down in here. A little darker than that, I think. And then I have one blended edge that I want to try right there. Just trying to soften this one edge so it has a smooth blend. I'll be doing that a few more spots as well. Back to the dirty watercolor. I left a couple of harsher edges here. I like to try to soften those down. And it looks like I'm going to be just about ready to start switching to the orange. A few more darks. Got the nose. I think I can get the mouth in there. Soften up the edge right around the lips, upper lip. Okay, and also want to leave some, definitely want to be leaving it a little bit lighter there. There, finger painting. Huh. Right there. Bring that dark back on the lip. Okay, good. Leave it alone. Moving on to the eye. Bring a little bit of a little bit of dark right up in the front of the eye. There we are. And let that blend through. Okay, I've still got this darker area down in here. I'm trying to pick out all my darks before moving on. Darker down on the chin. And I want a 
gently this edge very light to contrast against the background. Keep that upper lip a little brighter. Color's bleeding a little too much. Okay. Ready to move on. So now these back legs are each paw is going to be black, the tail is going to be mostly black, and there are some oranges in there as well, but I have this dark color that I'm working with right now, and then I'll bring the oranges in over the top. So we'll start down here, even darker than that. Starting down at the bottom of the feet, and bringing up that dark color, and I'll start mixing that with water, and I'll bring down the water from up here. A little further up and then when, it, when they meet in the middle I'll just get that nice faded blend. Up to the top I'll do a little water scribbles to get that blend. I'm still leaving the edge nice and bright. Bit of a shadow area in here. And right over here as well. This will be slightly darker, not that dark. Okay. Now I'll let that go. I'm happy with that back paw. And the next thing I think I can do, I can do these two sections of tail. Again with the dark, the dark neutral tint. All right. So this is going to be very dark right in the center. down water from the edges, a little too much water there. I'm gonna get some more blooms. Man, I try to be so careful. And that's the reason I always flick my brush. Just flick it and it gets exactly the right amount of water off of it. The uh, downside is it does get paint on all of your surroundings. Darken up the dark area of the tail again. Okay, and then move on. Now I'm going on to the end of the tail. And this one has some light areas in it, so I'll have to be a little more careful. Around the edge of the tail, down at the bottom here is still dark. and it kind of lightens up here uh, toward the top center. I should have my oranges now, maybe a little touch. And then it's dark again on the top. There. Yeah, I kind of, I'm glad I put that orange in there now. Otherwise, we're building it up in layers, glazing. We're going to lay down one color and then come back and lay down the next color over the top of it and let them blend visually. Uh, and that's kind of the technique I'm doing here, where I've got all these grays down first, and then I'll come back and add my orange. Only spot I did different, I just dropped a hint of orange into that tail. And then at this point, I think I can probably be done with the tail. So I've got, straighten out the edge a little. So I've got uh, the two front legs still that are the dark areas, and otherwise I'm on to my oranges. All right. I think this one will be a little bit intense. Should probably be 
tone down a little. Well, I guess mixing with the dirty water will tone it down. And that's pretty foxy colored. And I think I want to come all the way back up here to the top of the head. Oh, what a... This is going to be the lightest orange because it's got the highlights, so I don't want to even go all the way up to the top of the head, just close to it. Let some whites shine through. There, and then I'll have some orange coming on down in here. And even though these oranges aren't really this bright in real life or even in the photo that I'm referencing, I don't mind having a bright orange fox, especially in contrast to that background. I mean, it's still a winter scene. I think it's still coming across as a winter scene. And if not, I'll add more snowflakes later. There. Get that bright, leave that bright light color right up in there. some oranges in his ears. And that's going to be more of that brownie orange. And I'll try to keep that from bleeding too much. And it seems like that color is going to run no matter what I do. I'll tilt it up a little more. Let's see if that helps. My white areas are definitely getting filled in with orange. All right. Get some more of that brownie orangey. And as long as we're glazing here, I'll just bring a little bit of my oranges down. See, look at how that looks with the, the orange and the, uh, the gray layered. I really like how that looks. Really adds some depth. Bring my oranges down on this fox's leg as well, or on this other front leg. And it's almost a little bit of a yellowy orange, browny orange, orangey orange. Let's get all my colors together there, dull it down. And to do some extreme dulling down, you can always add a touch of blue, which we have plenty of. But I think I want to keep it a little more. I do want to keep it bright, bright and happy. And 
bringing my oranges in over those shadows. I might have to bring in a few more shaded areas in here. Drop in some water, a spot or two. So it should be fading out here toward the edge. So dropping in a little bit of water can definitely help that. Let's see, he's got some orange coming in up here. Yeah, I do want to leave that the chest area a little more white. I'll bring in some darks, some darker darks back here. Even if my darks are orange, as long as it's the right, uh, right value. So as long as it's light enough, dark enough that it makes sense, that's really all it needs. The colors can be pretty far off, but if the value's right, the painting still looks right. Cutie. Give it a little nose. Now that the face is starting to dry a little bit, we can come back in and make some adjustments to that mouth. I'll just make more adjustments later. It's fine. All right, so not more darky dorks up in here. That's pretty important. That's, this is what's uh, modeling it, giving it a little bit of shape. And it's blending into my oranges a bit too far, so I'm just gonna go ahead and move on to my feet. And I know I want these dark. right up to there. Well, this neutral tin's kind of a nice color. I don't use it that often, but it just kind of exactly right. And I'm working really well on this painting, so I'm pretty happy with it. I think I really do need to punch that color up a bit. More orange. And your colors are always going to dry a little bit darker, a little more faded. And when they're on the paper, when they're wet. So. If you're a new painter, that's one of the things that takes a little bit harder, a little bit longer to learn to gauge is what it's going to look like when it's dry. And one thing that can help a lot instead of diving right straight into paintings that you, you know, love or hate or, you know, have some connection to, just do some exercises, do some practices. Just do some washes, mix some colors. I'm kind of diving right in because everything I do, I kind of feel like it needs to be a finished product which I know that's silly. You really shouldn't look at that, look at things that way, but I do. Hmm. 
Mostly it's worked out. Although there are times when I definitely wish I had a little bit more practice with some washes or with some other technique. One thing you could do, which would be smart, is to stop when you run into a part of the painting that you're struggling with. Switch, switch paper, switch tactics, find something else. Um, just practice. I mean, do a study. I mean, all the uh, late great artists did it, right? All, well, so many artists do. Studies are just a thing that needs to be done. But I am not really, like for example, I could stop here and go, well, I don't like the look of that eye. Why don't I stop and practice eyes for a little while? I mean, you could do that. You could. Or maybe I'll go, go back and count this whole painting as a study and redo it. Could happen. And possibly will happen. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and call this um, Fox and Snow version one. Okay, well, I'm glazing. Are there any other colors? Okay, I overdid my darks. I should have left a few highlight areas to define the legs and a few other things. So I will be letting this dry and then I'll come back and with a layer of gouache in a few spots. So hold on a moment. One pro tip I'll tell you right now with working with gouache, gouache is an opaque watercolor. Don't mix it into your transparent palette. Put it on something entirely separate and just have just this scrap piece of watercolor paper left over. And that's what I'll be using. I'll go back to my detail brush. When you're using white gouache, make sure you use it from the tube. It's it's it is like watercolor in the way that, yeah, sure, you can let it dry and re-wet it, but it just, it's not the same. It just doesn't work the same. It's almost like letting acrylic dry and then trying to use it. I mean, it will re-wet. It's just, the gouache will re-wet anyway, not the acrylic. <laughs> so the gouache will re-wet. It's just, it's um, bad. It behaves badly. It's just not the same. white back in. And you can see that when it dries, it is kind of fading in a little bit. So it looks like stark bright white right now, but it fades nicely and makes it just like a light white highlight. It's never going to be white. Like if you would have left it white paper, it's never going to do that again, but it's a pretty good approximation. And sometimes you just have to fix your highlights. And aside from fixing highlights, we do have some snow we want to add to the sky. And I mean, I did, I used my spritzer, I used my water bottle to get a few snowflakes in there. But they just didn't, I mean, they're nice, they're good texture in the background, but they're not snowflakey looking enough for me, I don't think. So I'll just go ahead and take some of this gouache and splatter it onto the background shortly here. And then I'll have some nice falling snowflakes. There, 
bright, bright. Or if there were sun, it would be shining right off the edges of the fur right in there. Let it dry before you judge a color. It's going to change. See, that was a really bright highlight right on the edge of that leg, and look at how it faded. Not too many highlights on the tail. That should be in pretty good shadow. I think the edges of my legs are showing up nicely. A little brighter highlight down here on the edges of the fur. Okay, that's good, that's nice. Okay. Huh. Blend it out in here a little. If you go overboard, yes, you can come back with watercolor and paint over your gouache. Again, it's not going to be exactly the same, but it'll be fine. Okay, yep, a little white right up in there. little twinkle in the eye. And now I'm thinking I don't have enough orange in a few spots. So here's where I'm, I'm coming back with some little bit of orange over the top of the gouache, some gouache, some watercolor. I just want to punch it up a little. And maybe maybe I'll just leave it a little bit more fur strokey, brush strokey, furry. <laughs> We'll leave some definition to it anyway, instead of blending it all in. It's a little brighter. Okay, that's getting more better. Maybe we'll add some little oranges over here too. Kind of highlight that that chest area is white. And I know we have these legs, and I know those are probably should be a little bit more orange than they are. Just lightly, lightly. And especially down in here where it kind of blended. There, now I've got to see, now this is again with the glazing. I'm just adding another layer of color over it. So you're not just laying down the colors exactly where they go. That would be color blocking. Is where you put each color exactly where it goes and then figure out the edges later. Uh, this is glazing, so you're just taking one color at a time, laying it down. In this case, I started with the gray, went with the orange, went back to gray, went with some white, and now let's do some snowflakes. Let's get a nice watery gouache here, and a few things here that I don't want splattered. Kind of trying to cover up the fox a little bit. I guess he's okay to have snow in him. One downside, I guess you can call it a downside of splattering, is there's no way to make the paint go exactly on your paper and nowhere else. So be sure to wear something you don't mind getting paint on. If you have any valuable electronics, you might want to move them away. And I'm starting to lose the eyes because I've got some white splatters in there. So be sure to not lose your face detail. Okay, I know I've moved this around quite a bit during the painting, but... And maybe I'll just take a look and see if I can redefine anything here. Something in this area is not quite, not quite working. It's mostly done. I think I'm just gonna uh, want to touch up a few details, especially at that edge. And it could be simple. I just need to pull out a little bit of fur, bit of a furry fox, and then. 
that edge is just a little too harsh. I think that did help. Once it tones down a little more, it will. Yeah, I think it's because the fox's fur is so... I have it really muddled in here. Uh, it, like, colors blended a lot. So I just think I want to bring back a little bit of this definition here with some fur brush strokes. Now it's starting to look like a long hair fox. Shorter brush strokes. I love Kitty. I think the, the long hair looks a little more natural to me because I have a long hair cat. So making long hair for brush strokes is maybe a little too much second nature from what I'm painting on a short haired animal like a fox. Well, it's not super short hair. It's just not super fluffy either. You know? Okay. I'm just gonna stop there. Take a break. Let it dry a minute. I think I might come back in with some grays. I think I can add to the texture and also correct some of the value. But I think I need to wait until it dries a little. Oh. way more time than I usually spend on a painting video. Way more. I might be expanding my attention span with this. <laughs> I feel like watercolor should be done in 20 minutes. An hour if it's a big piece of paper. Okay, I know this isn't the, a real natural color for foxes if I do this, but I wanted to have a more feminine outline. So around this orange anyway, around the white here. And I think it'll translate because as a person looking at it, it's a natural shape for a person to see, even if it isn't natural for a fox to have. There. I don't want to go too high with the orange, but there, that's giving it a little bit better shape. Yeah, I feel like I like that a little better. Again, trying to be patient with these colors, letting them dry before going into too much more. Man, that 
tail? What do you think of the tail? I mean, I know it's meant to be in shadow, but I really want to see a highlight on it. I feel like I'm going a little overboard on the highlights, but I just want to define it. Separate it a little bit from the background there. Not too much. Yeah, it looks like he's got a little bit of snow there in his tail. I kind of like that. I think that's a good separation. I know I really shouldn't be messing with the background at this point, but I want to darken that up there. Just that little bit area right there. A little darker there. That's better. I'm going to darken the background over there. I might darken it over here too. In which case, I just have to turn it slightly so I can get at that angle. screen. Actually, more blue, just plain more blue. happier with that now. We've got the nice angles in the background, we've got the fox looking up, we've got the nice other angle down this way, although I could have angled that a little bit more strongly. I'll try and get this edge of this leg a little better. And don't worry, that'll fade. mess with it too much. There. That's better. One more touch on that eye.
painting after you're done. And this might still 2019. A few more days.